Uh, it really does give me great personal pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the Board of Trustees to this 40th uh, birthday, if you will, celebration of Africa Rice, which is being organized here in the Gambia. The Gambia, we know, was one of the founding members and remains one of the major supporters of local rice production in, in the continent. 20 years ago, almost exactly, at the half uh, of the life of Africa Rice, I had the privilege of joining uh, Africa Rice, then known as WARDA, to serve as the uh, WARDA Director of Research. I was hired at that time by Eugene Terry as part of his uh, change management team. Through the leadership of, of Dr. Terry, I think one can say that a new WARDA was born. Those who are present who knew our work during that period would have to say that, in fact, it was a rebirth of the organization founded 20 years earlier. And we see now, I think, the emergence of an entirely new and exciting dynamism. What I personally see today, under the leadership of the current Director General, Dr. Papa Abdelaziz, is another rebirth. And this rebirth is characterized, I think, by at least four principles that I'll just mention briefly. In short, I, I'd rather not say that Africa Rice is 40 years old, but that it is, in fact, experiencing a rebirth. And borrowing on the words of my, my young successor, uh, Marco Wolperice, we are, in fact, 40 years young. 40 years in the life of an organization <laughs> is a long time. But I joined the chairman to say Africa Rice is 40 years young. Today. With all these trials and tribulations, WADA survived and showed its resilience and came out even stronger today. It was later, in 2009, in Lomé Togo, reborn as Africa Rice Center, or Africa Rice, which we honor here today. Distinguished guests, as we celebrate Africa Rice today, we also find time pay our respects to those who helped to build, nurture, and sustain this organization through all these difficult times. They have helped to make this day possible. To each and every one of you, those long gone, those not here with us today, and those here present, we express our deepest gratitude and ask that you join us on this joyous occasion Happy anniversary to Africa Rice Center. Um, I'm once again uh, Peter Matlin, the chair of the Africa Rice uh, Board, and I am um, delighted to have the assignment this afternoon of chairing uh, this session, uh, part of the anniversary for the uh, 40 years of service of Africa Rice in West and Central Africa, and now uh, in a Pan African uh, mandate. Uh, our program this afternoon is we will begin with a uh, launching of a booklet that has been prepared by the policy unit of Africa Rice in collaboration with uh, partners in national programs. Uh, one of the silver linings of any crisis is that any shock to the system allows one to revisit the, uh, the problems that led to a crisis, uh, develop uh, responses to the crisis, and then uh, motivate people to implement those responses in a more serious manner. And in fact, uh, this is what is captured in, in this book. This booklet will be launched officially by uh, our main speaker this afternoon, Dr. Joshua Dion. Uh, it will be my greater delight to read through all of it and uh, before doing that, uh, let me simply show you how it looks like officially. And uh, by this uh, kind of a formal uh, gesture to announce uh, that uh, the book is launched. Indeed, as we all used to say and accept that water is life, one may venture to say that in Africa, rice is becoming increasingly 
a significant part of life. The challenge is uh, there basically in terms of political will of bringing it there. Fortunately, many African countries are moving along those lines, but moving along those lines uh, separately will allow us uh, to reach a certain level. Co coordinating effort in moving together along those lines by several countries would help Africa move very quickly from a food deficit net importing situation to a global, to a, a position of a major player in the global food market. The portion is deep. The opportunities are there. People can make money, a lot of money, because of five billion dollar markets, Africa, the issues raised by Dr. Gioni, the uh, intra-border, cross-border, all the kinds of stuff, protecting our markets uh, against African uh, entries while letting, keeping them open for others to come in, does not make any sense anymore. As it concerns the chain of value, there is nothing to say in terms of the part of commercialization, which is the most weakest of the chain. We have never been able to find, at least for the riziculture, a credit of commercialization. Si dans certains pays, on fait un effort pour donner un crédit de campagne, il y a absence totale de crédit de commercialisation et les paysans bradent leur récolte. On ne pense pas non plus aux infrastructures concernant euh, la protection des récoltes, c'est-à-dire les magasins, il n'y a pas de piste de production. Donc, euh, il y a beaucoup de pertes, comme le disait euh, hier le, le, le DG de Africa Rice. Et il y a aussi les éleveurs. Ça aussi, dans la chaîne de valeur, on ne tient pas compte de la partie qui revient aux animaux. The farmers' value addition is not in increased milling, but in increasing his output from one ton per hectare to five ton per hectare to ten tons per hectare. Now, when this is done, we find the farmer has raised his value or her value at the base level. Now, when you talk of value addition, the next value addition question is the storage, so that it stays longer. Because nobody at the moment stores well enough. And because it is not well stored, we again run the risk of wasting the crop and also forcing the farmers to sell at a low price.